the big shots and working hard to get you answers. Eight on your side's Mark Douglas investigates. Two months ago, he ordered major reforms for foster care in Hillsborough County. Now the secretary of DCF is quitting his job as Florida's child welfare watchdog. So what does Secretary Mike Carroll's departure mean for the thousands of foster children in Hillsborough County? Earlier this year, Aid on Your Side investigates uncovered foster kids living in cars and sleeping in offices. Investigator Mark Douglas joins us now. And Secretary Carroll, he promised to end all that. So now what? Well, it may be another six months before we actually know the answer to that question, Stacy. But DCF insisted today that Carol's resignation next month will not stop the foster care reforms that are just starting to take shape in Hillsborough County. Folks have a passion for kids in this community. Insiders say DCF Secretary Mike Carroll cares a lot about kids, too. And it was that passion that made him furious when our Eight on Your Side investigation discovered foster teens living in caseworker cars and sleeping in offices when they should have been at home or school. When you saw our stories about those kids in the gas station parking lot, what went through your mind? No, I guess I'm, uh, disappointment, I guess, is the best word for it. Uh, we have, a, I think, a pretty sacred responsibility. Carroll quickly called for two investigations and later ordered a corrective action plan by Hillsborough County's lead foster care agency, Eckerd Connects. He wanted a plan to fix the failures we first pointed out in that gas station parking lot. He knows our strengths and our weaknesses here. He knows our foster care system. Hillsborough Commission Chair Sandra Merman believes the Eckerd reforms Carroll first put in motion will keep going even after he leaves DCF in September. No one is taking their eye off the ball of planning and taking the corrective action. Merman insists Eckerd Connects has gotten the message and will improve the treatment of foster kids whether or not Carroll is still in charge of DCF. I do think Eckerd has taken seriously um, every single comment from you to, um, you know, the legislature to, you know, citizens. I, they have taken that to heart and said, we have to change the way we do business. Merman believes the governor will appoint an interim DCF leader when Carol leaves on September 6th, and he will let the next governor choose his replacement. Now he's been at this a long time. Carol has, what, like 28 years? 28 so, years. And he didn't give a specific reason on why he's leaving, but I mean, you do have an administration change coming. B a bit of a mystery there. He won't talk about it. His spokesman won't talk about it, but there is a regime change coming. There'll be a new governor at the end of the year, so it could just amount to that. Mm -hmm. There are also new federal laws and rules going into effect that are going to impact greatly what DCF does, so who knows? The point is that he's had a long run and he's almost gone. All right. Thanks, Mark. And if you have a problem you would like Mark to investigate, call our 8 on your side helpline, the number 1-800-338-0808. Now, Max Defender 8, the radar built for Tampa Bay weather and your Storm Teammate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervy. Well, the live sweep on Max Defender 8 still picking up a few showers across the southern part of Highlands County. These have just kind of developed and then lifting to the north. You may see a few showers like Placid. And of course, you can see where the lightning strikes are. Naturally, your eyes are drawn to these areas west of Temple Terrace. This has been going for some time. Sulphur Springs not moving very much. Seminole Heights kind of lifting toward Lutes at the moment. Some good uh, rainfall rates within here, maybe two, three, four inches per hour. So that's where the heavier rain is in that purple blob right there, right around uh, 275 at the moment. Uh, look at Lake Lindsay, Brooksville, seeing a few scattered showers. You go all the way up to the northeast, up into the eastern part of Citrus County. Those two continue to lift to the north. High pressure extends across the Gulf, but we're also seeing a transition now as this trough or the associated with this front lifts out. We'll eventually see more of a return to a southeasterly flow pattern for us. And that'll mean more afternoon thunderstorms, although there'll be fewer of them because of drier air aloft. 5.32 inches for the month. That's over two inches above our normal for the month of August. For the year, about three inches above normal, so you can see those are running relatively high. That's where the rain has fallen today. Kind of spotty, but we can still see a few inland showers this evening. 86 degrees here at Veterans Ford, about 67 100s. 
Uh, that's, of course, right along the Veterans Expressway. And Lakeland Auto Mall in Polk County, 80 degrees right now with a west wind at 2 miles per hour, one-tenth of an inch of rain. Still winds from the south tomorrow at 5 to 10 knots. Seas around 1 to 2 with a light shot bay waters. These are your upcoming tides at St. Petersburg Pier. The forecast planner at 9 p.m. 81, 77 degrees at 7 a.m., 91 degrees for tomorrow. We're going to transition to a bit more sunshine. We've seen a lot of this in the background. You can see on our camera image, cloudy skies. That's looking to the north toward that shower activity from the downtown area. 88 degrees at the airport, still warm there. Dew point 74 at 76 degrees. Rain cooled Riverview, Brandon, and Valrico. Palm Harbor's 87, Treasure Island, Sun City Center, 81 degrees. 78, Dade City, 86, Sarasota, Sebring, 92 degrees. In the tropics, we watch this very closely every day. 14th anniversary today of Hurricane Charlie in 2004. So this is the time of year, especially as we get into mid to late August, early September, the peak of the season. About a 20% chance of possible development for that area, but not really much of a threat here. A uh, trough of low pressure is lifting. We talked about that surface front lifting. That'll allow high pressure to build back in across the peninsula, carrying with it drier air, and that'll be a more stable atmosphere. Kind of see looking off to our east, a bit more dry air here, and that's gonna build back with high pressure. This is our moisture forecast. Tells us a lot about rain this time of year. The green areas higher, deeper moisture in the atmosphere, some drier air sliding in later this week. And that's why you'll see the lower rain chances on the forecast track. RPM says maybe a few inland showers or thunderstorms this evening. And of course, we'll continue to see more of a southerly flow. And that means we still could see a morning shower tomorrow, but we're kind of getting out of that pattern as we'll see a southeasterly flow. And then mostly inland tomorrow for the thunderstorms. Uh, as I mentioned, with that drier air coming in, rain chances are a little bit lower. That'll mean more sunshine and hotter temperatures. That'll take over essentially on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way into the weekend. You see the lower rain chance numbers. So plenty of heat ahead for us for this summer and just fewer shower chances. But it'll be more of our typical pattern with mostly afternoon and evening storms and probably rule out those morning showers, especially from Wednesday, Thursday on the rest of the week. All right. Thanks, Steve. No. Coming up next in sports, tempers getting the best of some Bucks players this morning at training camp. We're going to hear from head coach Dirk Cutter after a skirmish on the field. It marked the end of a long but good day of practice. And make sure you check out our WFLA News Channel 8 Facebook page for breaking news, live updates from around Tampa Bay, and the best videos for you to share with your friends. And don't forget to share your photos with us as well. Tonight, the president's reaction after former aide Omarosa releases a secret recording of him also confronting yet another aviation security threat, how to keep planes from being snatched on the ground. When we see you back here for Nightly News. There's a common threat I see every time I'm in the field. While well, this was burning, you were saving other homes. Neighbors helping neighbors and strangers alike. This is what America's about. Sometimes it's nice to see all the good that's out there. Bringing folks out, we have seen it in community after community. These incredible ninja